Welcome to lesson 11, adding multiple snakes. Take a look at this. You can now add more snakes. You can compete against them, or you can quickly lose and just watch them fight it out at lightning speed. Let's do that. Okay, there's no way I'm gonna get that apple but I'm gonna say down and go over. And I think I've already lost. I think I bumped into something. Now let's increase the speed and just let these guys finish it, see what happens. Every time one of the snakes, including the player controlled snake, hits something, then it's out. So I don't know if you can tell, but there are fewer snakes in there now than there were there it goes. It's down to, I don't know, how many do we have? Four or so? And they're getting longer. Okay, so um, what else can we do here? I think before we had the ability to change the number of cells and the speed. So I'm going to interrupt this and then we'll take a quick look at the code. Kind of um, just a quick... Look at the differences. Okay, so before you saw this at function that will translate to a point and then execute the function that you pass it. And now I've changed it so you call this make at and you give it the P5 object that you're going to call things like push and translate and pop on. And then it returns this at function. So it's a little bit complicated, but there it is the index.html file, you see um, here's the draw helper JavaScript file. Here's a snake JavaScript file. I pulled all, all the snake specific code into a new file. And then here's some, some directions. And I made some changes. I used to have the manual speed and then the auto speed, but now there's just one speed for everything. Here's the sketch. Um, so here are the changes between Lesson 10 and Lesson 11. I've added the colors for the different snakes. And this whole section of darkness is removed. Um, so we don't give milliseconds per move an initial value. We don't need direction and segments anymore because they're part of the individual snakes. Each snake has its own direction and segments. We don't need zero vector. Auto driving moves to the snakes. And we don't use this at function the same way. Um, we don't have num snakes or snakes. Here in the setup, we create this at function. We looked at that a moment ago. We don't need the zero vector anymore. Here in draw, we throw away all this code. And now we have this. And what do I want to mention in it? Well, here we have snakes, which is uh, an array of snakes. And for each S in the snakes array, then we look and see if it's an auto-driving snake, then we do the auto-driving bit, which is to set the direction. And then uh, for every snake, we move it. Here we used to call draw snake. Now for each snake, we call the snake's draw method. We no longer have an A key to turn on auto driving. Here, the player controls snake sub zero, the first snake. Changes in the controls, I said I removed the manual speed and the auto speed, and now I just have a speed. I added, uh, when I'm using my keyboard, one of my keyboards, I have a home and end key, and that's more convenient for me than W and S because I use a Dvorak keyboard layout, so my W and S are not located where they are on a QWERTY keyboard that most of you use. Okay, we no longer set the direction. And here we create the snakes 
array. So we decide, we look at how many snakes that we're supposed to make, and then we call the constructor for snake once for each of those. And we don't do the segments business in here. We do that now in the, in the snake class. The move snake code moves. The collides code moves. All this is deleted or, or moved to another file. Set direction. All that stuff. Draw arena. The same. Draw snake is moved. Draw food is the same. At is now in a different file. Okay, let's move on. Here's the new snake class. And you see a lot of TypeScript code in here to make fields for this class. And what do we have? Well, this P object stores the P5 object that we use to do P5JS um, functions. And each snake has an index starting with zero. It needs to know the arena width, needs a function to call to get the cell width, needs to know how many cells per dimension. Here's the zero vector from before. Here's the at function. Each snake has a direction and an array of segments. Uh, a move order, whether it's alive, whether it's auto driving. Here's the constructor. What do we want to look at here? A lot of this is just moved from the old file. This creating the segments code is about the same. Access move orders, this is new. When you have multiple snakes, you don't want them all just kind of dancing and doing the same way. So the there's this array of access move orders. And so what it means is for the first snake that we make, um, 0, 1, and 2 mean that it goes toward the food on the x-axis. And when it when it goes as far as it can go, then it switches to the y-axis and then the z-axis. And these other orderings of the numbers 0, 1, and 2 specify the order of x, y, and z for um, subsequent snakes. And you see that move order just gets set to randomly choosing one of these. And then all snakes except the first are self-driving. The player controls the first snake. Draw, I think, is pretty much the same. Um, I think most of the rest of this is pretty much the same. Okay, so I'll leave you from this page, and I'll just mention some of the future plans. One would be to make a multiplayer game out of this, put it on a, on a web server, so people connect and they become one of the snakes and they control one of the snakes. I think that would be a really interesting thing to do. Um, what I'll probably do before that is add multiple food. So just imagine you've got a big arena here. You've got all the snakes. Uh, you're going really fast. And then we set it in motion here. Wouldn't it be more interesting if there were multiple food objects that appear? Then the they all the snakes wouldn't be going toward the same food. So that's... Um, something that's probably coming. Okay, that's it for lesson 11.